And Mike Pence, I hope you're going to stand up for the good of our Constitution and for the good of our country. And if you're not, I'm going to be very disappointed in you. I will tell you right now. I'm telling you what, I'm hearing the Pence. I'm hearing the Pence just caved. No. Is that true? I didn't I'm hear hear, I'm hearing no. reports that Pence caved. No I'm way. telling you, if Pence caved, we're going to drag mother <laughs> through the streets. You <laughs> politicians are going to get <laughs> drugged through the streets. Bring it out! Bring out Pence! Our investigation found that immediately after the President's 2.24 p.m. tweet, the crowds both outside the Capitol and inside the Capitol surged. By 2.24 p.m., the Secret Service had moved Vice President Pence from the Senate chamber to his office across the hall. The noise from the rioters became audible, at which point we recognized that maybe they had gotten into the building. Hold. If we're moving, we need to move now. Copy. If we lose uh, any more time, we may have, we may lose the ability to to leave. So if we're going to leave, we need to do it now. They've gained access to the second floor, and I've got public about five feet from me down here below. Okay, copy. They are on the second floor, moving in now. We may want to consider getting out and leaving now. Copy. It was clear that it was escalating and escalating quickly. So then when that tweet, the Mike Pence tweet, um, was sent out, um, I remember us saying that that was the last thing that needed to be tweeted at that moment. The situation was already bad, and so it felt like he was pouring gasoline on the fire by tweeting that. Now the individual was in a tree going be a white male, about six feet tall, thin build, brown cowboy boots. He's got blue jeans and a blue jean jacket, and underneath the blue jean jacket, the complainant both saw a stock with AR-15. Motor one, make sure PPD knows they have an elevated threat in the tree south side of Constitution Avenue. Look for the don't tread on me flag, American flag face mask, cowboy boots, weapon on the right, right side hip. Will we encounter the people once we make our way? Repeat. Encounter any individuals if we made our way to the to the. There's six officers between us and the people that are five to ten feet away from me. Yeah, okay, well, I'm going down to evaluate. Go ahead. We got three men walking down the street in fatigue. We're carrying AR-15. Copy at Fort Smith and Independent. Some of the weapons that people had at the rally included five poles oversized um, sticks or flagpoles, um, bear spray. Is there anything else that you recall hearing about the, um, the, the people who would gather on the ellipse had? I recall Tony and I having a conversation with Mark probably around 10 a.m., 10, 15 a.m., where I remember Tony mentioning knives, guns in the form of pistols and rifles, um, bear spray, body armor, spears, and flagpoles. We have a clear shot if we move quickly. We got smoke downstairs, set by unknown smoke set downstairs by the protesters. Is, is that route compromised? We have this <laughs> insecure. However, we will bypass some protesters that are being contained. There is smoke unknown. What kind of smoke it is? Copy clear we're coming out now all right make a way 
I'm here delivering the president's message. Donald Trump has asked everybody to go home. That's our order. Go He says go home. He says go home. Yeah, he, he said to go home. After officers engaged in multiple hours of hand-to-hand -hand combat, with over a hundred of them sustaining injuries, President Trump tweeted at 601 and justified the violence as a natural response to the election. He said, quote, these are the things and events that happen when a sacred landslide victory is so unceremoniously, viciously stripped away from great patriots who have been badly, unfairly treated for so long. Go home with love and peace. Remember this day forever. He called the mob great patriots. He told people to remember the day forever. He showed absolutely no remorse. 